Hey everyone, just want to do a quick video on some of the gear that Caboose and I have been using over the years. So the burning question that nobody has ever asked is, what is the type of riding gear that we use, <laughs> you know, specifically our boots? There are a lot of things that we buy for our bikes and, you know, for ourselves when we ride, but there's some things that are just kind of key. One of them being, you know, proper footwear. When Caboose and I started our motorcycle journey, he started off on a 1989 Yamaha DT50 at an extremely young age. The only thing that I had for him at the time was a pair of combat boots, a thick jacket, and I made sure I got him a helmet and gloves. He took to riding motorcycle like riding a bicycle. And I don't think he's ridden a uh, bicycle since. A bicycle. Bicycles. <laughs> bicycle! I don't think he's ridden one since. As time went on and we upgraded our motorcycles, we also had to upgrade our gear. The first thing that I got him and myself was a pair of good boots. We both decided on the Fox quarter style bomber boots. This is an excellent riding boot for street and moderate dirt riding. In one of the videos that I shot in the Olympic Forest, it was very rainy, very muddy, and these boots are not any kind of water resistance or whatever. They provided the proper protection, and I'll just leave it at that. It's a, it's a great boot for well under $200. Caboose was the first to transition to a motocross style boot because he had ridden and owned a DR200, an XT225, an XT250, an XT350, a DRZ400, a Honda XR650L. Now these are all bikes that we ran through by trading up and down to kind of find that perfect one. And we're still on that adventure. But this is the boot that he went with. It's the Fly Maverick boot, or I think it's the I think it's Fly, but it's a Maverick boot under the two hundred dollar mark, and he really enjoys it. It's a it gives you that really cool feel, uh, kind of makes him look like uh, Snake Plissken from Escape from New York. But you know who doesn't like to feel like a like a superhero badass uh, time to time? Nice and comfortable. Wear a pair of thick socks. You can wear uh, with your Levi's or jeans tucked in. If you have a baggy enough pant, you can wear it over the over the boot style. If you uh, you know have pants that are loose enough. Another style that Caboose likes to ride with on his Royal Enfield Himalayan XT350 and occasionally his DT50 is just to throw on a pair of a rat. I think I'm saying it right. A rat um, cowboy style pull-on boots. The steel shank, or not, I don't know if it has a steel shank, but it has a pretty firm bottom that you can use for kickstarts. And it provides ankle protection and it has a heel and a good rubber sole. I had been using the Fox Bomber boots for a good minute, but I wanted to keep up with the Joneses and Caboose and step up to his style of motocross boots. And I went with the O'Neill Sierra style boot. And I have to say, I am very pleased with this boot. These boots were purchased off of Amazon at a discount price. They were a return, and again, got them well, well, well under the $200 mark. It's a, it's a great boot, and even though it's kind of probably, I, I want to say it's an upgrade from the Maverick, just being the name brand, and it's kind of a Swedish material, but the only thing, the only thing that's kind of janky and ratchet about it is it's coming apart right here. But I literally paid only over $100 for these things. So I think with some shoe glue and just dealing with, just dealing with it, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to break the bank. I am cheap as hell sometimes. But this has not been a problem for me. It, it showed up like this. It didn't just even peel away. That's how it just showed up and I was okay with it just over a hundred dollars um shifter pads awesome 
works well with my my TW200 with my IMS shifter. I have ridden it with Caboose's um, Royal Enfield Himalayan. Shh, don't tell him. But I'm about to steal that bike from him. And it's a very comfortable boot. I go up a a full size, and it is it is a, a just a great boot. Full size, thick pair of socks, and it's pretty awesome. Caboose is going to give us his thoughts on his boots and what he did to break them in. What I did was I rode around on Ray's T-Dub for a good year and that's how I broke mine in. But just from doing bending ups and downs, taking long walks like this or going into weird things, that's how I bent mine. Or just lifting my foot off the ground and pointing my toes to the ground. That's how I did mine. It was just simple as That's all I did to break mine. Okay, so Caboose, did you feel like the boots got broken in as in softer and would bend more? Or do you feel like you just got used to them being as stiff as they are? A little bit of both because of the way these boots are meant to be. They get a certain malleableness around here and here because of the leather right here. And you can see on mine, this small patch of leather. So parts like that, they're meant to break in and obviously you can see my feet bending. But construction-wise, where parts need to be rigid, they stay rigid, do not worry about that. So for, like, again, big ass boots like these, it just depends on the bike, because I can get this and do it on this bike, but it's not the most easiest. But like on a DRZ400 or a Royal Enfield, with the sharp pegs like this, it's rather easy. But again, another factor to play is I got a bent shift lifter. Bent? shifter when I bought the bike. I have yet to replace it too. So give us an example of what it looks like trying to shift with those boots on. All right, so going from first, from neutral into first. Going down, variety, second gear, third gear, that's about it. Now put your toe underneath. So you see, he can, he can manage it even with a bent shift lever and we are going to replace that with an IMS outlock shifter here shortly. But you can see that he can still grab it with the uh, rubber parts of the, or the uh, top of the boot. He can, he, can, he can get it. He has better luck with this type of shifter with his Fox boots or maybe a pair of Converse or cowboy boots. So the punchline to the video is, you don't have to spend an incredible amount of money on your motorcycle riding gear. Unless that's your flavor, you like to go out and be that person, that guy or girl, whatever, that <laughs> likes to uh, show how much they spend. You don't have to break the bank for good quality gear. Well, I hope this video helped at least one person. If you have any questions, please leave, leave a comment below. Our numbers are slowly growing, and I gotta say, we appreciate each and every one of you guys and girls. So if you wouldn't mind, please give us a like and a subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.